Okay, so everything we've done so far then culminates in this lesson tab. So I must admit I haven't used it before because I really just usually create resource folders, put all my lectures in that and give it to the students. But I feel this lesson tab is going to become quite important now that we're going to do possibly do more online learning. Um, and so what in my mind the lesson tab is, is a workflow. So in class if you are introducing the students to the concept, then discussing something and giving them questions and watching a video. All of these steps, uh, you've got to guide the students through those steps. And instead of doing it in an email, you can do it here in this lesson tab. And so you can put links to all of these different things here. <clears throat> and so um, you can see this add content. There's several different things you can do here. Add text, add a resource folder link, add assignments, embed the calendar, blah, blah, blah. Um, add questions, add checklists, and so it's really, this will require effort and it's laying out your lectures. It's really a lesson plan, I suppose. So let's add some text, and you'll say, uh, play tectonics 2020. Uh, welcome to the course. Below is the calendar. Okay, and you can do all of your normal editing things that I know you know how to do. If I click save, you can see it appears here. Um, let's embed the calendar. So embed calendar. You can see it's added the calendar. Students can click on all these different options to work, work, move through the calendar. Um, let's add some more text here and say your final test will be on, I don't know, 5th of May. <clears throat> I will resend the link closer to the time, but here it is below. It will only be active on the day. And so you could click save, and you would go here and go add link to test or quiz. And so this is the quiz we've created. I'm going to use selected. And so you can see this is the intro play page, and they've got all important detail details. You could do the same with an assignment. I just haven't created one yet, so I haven't linked it yet. So all you would do is go add contents and link to assignment. Okay, so now we are going to create some actual lectures. So they're going to be called sub pages, so that it's not all part of this one long big page. So let's go here and click on sub page. Let's call it Lecture 1, oops, Play Tectonics. Okay, and we're going to click Create. I'm not going to click on any of these other options. I don't really understand them. Okay, and you can see under this Lessons tab that we just started, we've now got Lecture 1. So let's add some text here and say Lecture 1. Oh, wait. Welcome to Lecture 1. Um, before starting, please see Lecture 1 uh, Prescribed Reading. Let me, please read Lecture 1 Prescribed Reading. Click Save. So before we want the students to do anything, we want them to go read an article about this topic so they can understand um, broadly what we're going to be speaking about. Hopefully it's an introductory article that they can grasp and is not too complicated. I'm going to click here and I'm going to go add resource folder. So I'm going to, I will have told them to look at the lecture one readings in this resource, in this, it should say prescribed readings, not additional readings. I will have labeled everything clearly and I'll click save. Um, if I had readings in there, I'm sure they would have shown up. I could have actually clicked on the correct reading. Okay, so now they know what to do. And how about next we say to them, give them some questions before we get going with the lecture. So let's go add text. Um, answer the questions below to assess your understanding of the readings. If you get any questions wrong, please go back to the reading and go through the problem sections again 
or look online to find material to help you understand. If you are still struggling, please explain what you are struggling with in an email to me. And because that is far too much text for anyone to read, let's break it up into lines so that it is more manageable. And so we go save. Okay, so we've got the description below of what to do. It says answer the questions below. And very nicely in this add content, there is a thing saying add question. So do you want it to be a multiple choice question or a short question? So right now it's clicked on multiple choice. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's, you, you know my questions already. Um, a divergent plate boundary is where plates move possible answers apart apart towards each other how oh sorry horizontally past each other divergent so they should be moving apart this is the correct answer show students a graph of how other respond responded after they answered the question. This is a great way um, for some peer learning. Grade this question. Do you want to put it into your grade book? Um, text shown if answer is correct. Well done. You are correct. Tent so wrong. Please re-look at the reading. Don't release item until all prescribed. No, Pre, what prerequisites are complete require this item so students have to answer this um, and we're going to click save so let's see how it's going to show up it will show up like this which is great so the students will go through this um, and yeah and you can see a poll as to how many other people did, uh, did it so let's add a link now uh, to the lecture so we will actually um, link to the lecture material so let's click here add text please see the lecture C sorry lecture one in the resource folder below okay go through the lecture PowerPoint and answer the question that follows. So adding a PowerPoint is only really going to be useful if we can do some actual online teaching because any of you know that your PowerPoints never have much text in it and it's completely reliant on you explaining them. So we will have to work on that. I know there's this blue button option so I'm just putting it here for completeness but I completely recognize that giving up PowerPoints is not a good way to teach. The students will be able to learn better from the readings, and unless we can describe our PowerPoints, they're not going to be very useful. But let's just put this here anyway. Um, so we, it's exactly the same. We're going to add this link to the resource folder. Um, there you are. You could actually click on the PowerPoint itself. I'm not going to click on this JPEG image. Okay, you can see it's put it down here. Oh, it's put the JPEG anyway. And you can keep building up your lecture like this. Another cool thing that you can do is add a checklist. So first we add some text that says, at the end of this lecture, you should have um, read the prescribed reading answer the related question gone through the PowerPoint I have an added one but if there is a related question you could um, say that again here you could say here um, submitted 
your point of view on the forum. So we'll go to forums later, but I'm going to put it in here for completeness. And six, um, submitted your comments on this lecture to the lecturer. Okay, and let's click save. So you can see at the bottom here, oh, sorry, sorry, I think I did this wrong. <laughs> click edit. Okay. So all of these are things they should do at the end of the lecture, but I mean, I shouldn't have put them there. So I'm going to cut them all. Let's click save. So that's the text that I've put in here. I'm now going to go here and go add checklist. So checklist title. Um, so end of lecture one. And I suppose here, this lecture, you should be should have um, I'm just going to put all the things that I wrote earlier read the prescribed reading answer the related questions sorry I'm just copying and pasting all the stuff I typed earlier Okay, so what happened earlier is I just typed out all of these six things, which is fine. You can just tell the students these are the six, six things you should have done. But by doing it this way, I'll show you, they can actually tick off which of these they have done. I mean, this is a list of things they've done. You could also done, have done a list of this is what I've learned um, and say if you haven't ticked all of these, you need to go back to the sections that um, you've missed and just make sure you understand those different um, topics and so I said at the bottom here submitted your comments on this lecture to the lecturer so let's create some text and you can say um, feedback on lecture I would uh, Sorry, sorry. Things I would like you to continue, start, stop doing during lectures. Okay, click on save. Okay, so you've asked for feedback and now you need somewhere for the students to type. So you're going to click here and you're going to click on add comment tool. And you'll see at the bottom, students can add comments there. So, but it's a bit pointless putting this here when I've done the checklist before that. So I think you can reorder stuff here. Okay, so you can see that, um, I don't know if you can drag here. So I would drag up this feedback on the lecture above here. And then I'll click save. So you can see when the lesson loads, it's now moved this checklist to the end and it's moved this feedback over here. I should probably make this bold so that it's easier to see. Okay, and so the one thing we haven't done here in our checklist was this forum option. And so if we go to add contents, add text, um, please post your views on the forum below. Um, the question is, and you could type what the question is, it is compulsory to respond. Click save. You can see that's loaded it right at the bottom here. I should probably do a heading that says forum. Um, and so I could go here and click on linked to a forum or topic. You can see this is the one I've just created. I'm going to use selected. You can see it's put it right at the bottom. Let's actually just put a heading here because it's so hard to see. Forum and make it bold. And so we just need to change the order of stuff in our lesson because we said the forum um, should come before the submitting comments on the lectures. And remember how we reordered was we went up here to reorder. And we're going to move this forum up here above feedback. 
So I think if you did nice headings, it would be a lot easier to see stuff and to move stuff around. Um, but yeah, let's click save. <coughs> And so you can see this is your <coughs> workflow for your lecture. And maybe doing nice headings would help a lot more structure it. But yeah, this is just a basic idea on how to create a lesson. If you wanted to then create lecture number two, you would go and create um, another sub page. And just to take you back to that original page we created, where it introduces students, yeah. here you can see is lecture one. If you created lecture yeah. two, it would all be here so students can easily navigate. Okay, and so just to give you an idea of my finished product, I mean, I know I can go do more. I've gone through and put headings for each of my different sections. You can see I've added a video here at the beginning for students to go to. It says, answer the following questions. I still need to go add those in. Prescribed reading, um, questions for prescribed reading, PowerPoint lecture, questions for PowerPoint. I haven't added those in either. Forum, feedback on lecture checklist at the bottom here I should add reading for the next lecture. So this is just an idea of how you can create a workflow for the students to workflow, work through from lecture to lecture.